Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of What is WebSphere? I'm also the series of certification guides under the title exam scam. We appreciate it if you want to get Java certified or rational certified or portal certified. Head over to my website www.pulpjava.com potentially even potentially even examscam.com and uh, pick up a couple of copies of my books. Anyways, one of the things I wanted to show you right now, I've actually just created a stateless or stateful Enterprise Java being called a stateful timer. It has an instance variable. Now, stateful session beans are slagged for all sorts of reasons, one of which is the, the inability of many application servers to be able to, to properly workload manage the state in a stateful session bean. Uh, WebSphere 6 takes care of it. I just do some configuration changes, but you know, WebSphere is the best, and, and not everybody uses WebSphere. So um, I want to show you actually you could uh, create a stateless session bean, but based very similarly on the stateful timer. Um, and we'll allow this timer to do calculations, but we'll ask somebody else to store the state. So how do you create a, a stateless session bean? Well, that's pretty easy. I'm going to create a new EJB. It's an enterprise Java bean under the EJB wizards. The bean name will be the stateful timer. Or sorry, it's the stateless timer. Um, the source folder will be... Well, let's... Um, EJB module, that's where they go, um, and uh, the default package will be com.examscam.ejb. It is a session bean. I'm going to click the next button. It is stateless, um, and it will have a remote interface. You could also have a local interface too. Um, again, I'm going to kind of go beyond the, uh, the convention and put remote at the end of the name of the remote interface. You're not supposed to, you shouldn't do it in your production code, um, but here for learning, I feel comfortable doing that. So I click the next button, say no, I don't want a class diagram, and finish. And all of a sudden, I'm going to have the basic parts of a stateless Now, one of the interesting things about uh, the stateless session being is the fact that it's not supposed to have any instance variables in it. And at least if it does, um, they won't necessarily be tied to a client. Um, so whereas our stateful session bean had the start time, um, we don't want that. We want sort of all these other methods. So we want the same functionality to reset, get elapsed time, get start time, maybe even start. Um, but uh, we don't want to actually hold an instance variable. We want some other object to store our state for us. And so here's my state list timer bean. How can we do that? Well, you know, this is the great thing about using EJP. You just take some of that lifecycle method stuff, kind of get it, get it right off the darn screen there. Um, go back to your code, and uh, I'm just going to put the method stubs that I want there. So I'm going to have a start method, get start time, get elapsed time. I don't think I actually need a reset method right here. Um, and essentially what we do is where we figure out the start time, instead of just kind of storing the start time locally, we'll return that as a long. And we'll say return system.currentTimeRelease. Okay, and then get start time. Well, I guess we don't really need to get start time because the client has a start time. Get elapsed time, what will we do? Well, we'll actually take a long, figure out what the start time is, and then return system current time delays minus the start time. Now, how does this work? Well, essentially what we're doing is we're figuring out the start time on the server. Um, we give that to the client. The client stores that. The client then wants to know how much time has passed. They provide the start time back to us. We do our calculus here, and we send that back to the client. Now again, this is a stateless session bean. Um, you know, and people are saying, you know, why would you want to do this in an EJB? Well, EJBs provide you distribution. Um, they're inherently remote objects. They have that remote interface. Um, they are transactionally, you can have transaction management on them. They are sound in a multi-threaded manner. They can have security right down to the method level. If just at a Java bean, I don't know how you'd secure those individual methods. A lot of different people access to them. No problem with an EJB. And so I'm going to click Save there. I'm also going to just move to the, the Java perspective. Um, you notice that I want the start method and get elapsed time methods to be available to clients. Well, again, you have to promote those. Enterprise bean the remote interface. Um, and then there's the get elapsed time method. Enterprise bean, promote to remote interface. And 
that's essentially it. Um, I can even take a look at the remote interface here for my EJBs. And you can actually see if I go um, stateful timer bean. Geez, where's my home and remote interfaces? Oh, I can't actually find them. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to generate my deployment code. Okay, so generate the deployment code. So I've got to be in the J2EE perspective there. Right click on my EJB module, click deploy. And uh, those home and remote interfaces will be in the client jar file for my application. And then all my errors go away. Now everything is lined up properly. And uh, we can now actually go ahead and test these Enterprise Java Beans. And that's going to be on the next tutorial. So anyways, as I said, um, I am the author of What is WebSphere and uh, the Exam Scam series of guides. Please go to pulpjava.com. Um, or head over to examscam.com and buy a copy of the book off of our website. Um, it, uh, we appreciate it if you buy it off us. You can also buy it off Amazon, but uh, we keep them in stock and we typically ship them out the very same, if not next day, if you order th from us um, through our website. And that's about it for creating stateless enterprise Java beans, session beans. Um, all I have to say now is uh, happy WebSphere.